Hello, everybody. Welcome to Worship Today. We're at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. Today, we're wrapping up our um, summer series on the Nicene Creed. And at the same time, we are celebrating our 50th anniversary as a congregation. And so these two themes are going to intertwine today as we remember that we are a conservative Lutheran congregation and we stand in line with the one holy Christian and apostolic church that we believe, teach, and confess what the Christian church has has taught for 1,700 years as reflected in the Nicene Creed. And of course, the Nicene Creed is echoing and teaching what the Holy Scripture teaches just in a concise, um, almost bullet point um, type format. And so today we're going to remember that. We're going to thank God for that. And, and as we join with believers throughout the ages in confessing the truth of Scripture, we are reminded that our own lives are based on Scripture as well. And that we as individual confessions echo the truths of Scripture by what we say and how we live and what we, what we, how we confess Christ to our neighbor. And so it's a good day to be in God's house as all these things come together. The, the Nicene Creed, our 50th anniversary, and the great blessing that each of us have to be God's people confessing his truth to the world. We're glad you're with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Than Jesus' blood and righteousness, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and strong. trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found clothed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the throne on Christ the solid rock I stand We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from Hebrews chapter 10, beginning at verse 19, and then also from chapter 12, the first three verses. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is his body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance that brings faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, it is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those earlier days after you had received the light when you endured a great conflict full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood by, side by side with those who were being so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your, your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And by my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. And in chapter 12, the first three verses, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of our God. 
Our second scripture lesson today comes from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at the 11th verse. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope, without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one, and, it is, and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far away, and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by the one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Our gospel reading for today is from Matthew chapter 7, beginning at the 13th verse. Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do pick, uh, people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. And not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as the teachers of the law. This is the word of our God. We continue now by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and saw her to be his holy bride. And with his blood he This summer, we have been studying the Nicene Creed. It is the major confession of faith of the Holy Christian Church. And the truth that it contains is high, is high and wide and long and deep. For many of us, we have been confessing the Nicene Creed throughout our lives. We've learned it as children, and we've been confessing it since then. The Nicene Creed was born out of controversy in the Christian church. Remember the history? A, fa <clears throat> a false teacher named Arius was teaching that Jesus was not fully God, that he was not equal to the Father. And then later on, the next generation used the same arguments to, to attack the Holy Spirit, that he was not fully God that he was not equal to the Father. So the church of the fourth century had to get together to deal with these false teachings. And at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and the Council of Constantinople in 381 AD, they condemned these false teachers and created the Nicene Creed as a faithful witness, an echo, to the truths of God's holy word. 
The Nicene Creed echoes what Scripture teaches us about the Son of God and about the Holy Spirit, and specifically that they're both God equal to the Father. Here's what it says about the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. And when it came to the Holy Spirit, we confess that the Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified. Both the Son and the Spirit are fully God, equal to the Father. We believe in one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our salvation is dependent on this triune God. Our salvation is dependent on the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Think through salvation in terms of the Holy Trinity. God the Father loves the world so much that he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to do the work of salvation for us. Jesus, who is the Son of God, is born in Bethlehem, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He is both God and man, and he lived a holy, righteous, perfect life for us and for our salvation. And then he suffered and died on a cross to take our sins away, to face that punishment of death that we deserve. And then on the third day, the Son of God rose from the dead, and you are now declared righteous, justified, holy, and forgiven because of his work. God, the Holy Spirit, brings this good news to you in your life, and he creates faith within you through the waters of holy baptism, through the power of the word of God, and he sustains that faith throughout your life through Holy Communion and Holy Scripture. You know Jesus as your Savior and God as your Father because of the work of the Holy Spirit. If you deny this, like Arius did, there are big problems. If you deny this and dismantle the Holy Trinity, that's what really Arius and all the other false teachers um, throughout history and even today continue to do. They're dismantling the Holy Trinity. If that happens, then Holy Scripture is no longer true and trustworthy. It means that you don't have a savior. It means that you are lost and condemned in your sin. That's how important this is. That's how important it is to know and understand and confess the truth of the Holy Trinity. That's why the Holy Christian Church has always defended the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that they are one God in three persons, because our salvation is at stake. The Nicene Creed is much more than simply a 1,700-year-old historical document. It is a confession of the truth of Holy Scripture about God, the Holy Trinity. And it's a confession that has united Christians of all times and all, and all places over the centuries. Today is, we remember our 50th anniversary here at Trinity Lutheran Church. We thank God that we are conservative Lutheran Christians who stand in, un in unity with the Holy Christian Church. And we boldly believe, teach, and confess the truths of the Nicene Creed. This might not seem like a big deal to you, 
at first. But the reality is, is that most churches today do not hold to the truths of the Nicene Creed. At one point or another, they have abandoned the truth of Holy Scriptures. At one point or another, they deny the truth that's confessed in the Nicene Creed. For instance, few churches today teach the doctrine of creation, that God the Holy Trinity created the heavens and the earth out of nothing in six days, and he rested on the seventh. Many deny the deity of Jesus in some sh way, shape, or form. Some believe that, and they teach, that God's gender is unimportant. Many minimize the importance of Jesus' crucifixion and don't even talk about it. Many spiritualize the resurrection and outwardly deny any kind of physical resurrection. Many believe the Holy Spirit is the power or the love or the energy of God rather than a person of the Godhead equal to the Father, equal to the Son. Many deny that baptism is not for the remission of sins. And few believe that the physical resurrection of the dead is going to happen on the last day. In much of the Holy Christian Church today, the Nicene Creed is, is not believed, nor is it used. It's considered as simply a historical document from 1700 years ago, like an old dusty footnote to history. By God's grace and by his mercy, we do not think like that. As conservative Lutheran Christians, we stand united with the Holy Christian Church and we confess the truths of the Nicene Creed. We believe, teach, and confess that the Creed is a faithful echo of the Word of God. The Nicene Creed is a part of our witness to the world. This is what it means to be a Christian. These are the core teachings of the Christian faith. As we celebrate our 50th anniversary as a congregation this year, it's important to remember that, that we are standing in a confession of faith that stretches over 1,700 years. And it goes back even before that, of course, because it goes right back to Scripture itself, God's holy word, Christ, the Son of God, and his prophets and apostles. We are part of a story that's bigger than ourselves. We are part of God's family. We are part of God's kingdom. The Nicene Creed is one important way that signals our unity with the one holy Christian and apostolic church. When you think about the Nicene Creed, remember that, that it is an echo of Holy Scripture. That, that it's built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets of Scripture itself. That's how St. Paul talks. In Ephesians chapter 2, we heard today, you are fellow citizens of God with God's people and members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Not only is the Nicene Creed built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus as the chief cornerstone, but so is our congregation. As we celebrate our 50th year, we rejoice and we thank God for this solid foundation that we have. And that solid foundation, 
When we say Holy Scripture and being built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles, we mean that Holy Scripture then is the authority in our congregations. That Scripture is the authority in conservative Lutheran Christian churches. That Holy Scripture is the authority here in our congregation at Trinity Lutheran Church. And really, Scripture is the authority in our own personal lives as well. It teaches us that God's word, that the truths of God's kingdom are important and we confess them to the world. And the most important truth in Holy Scripture is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that salvation is found in the Son of God, that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. It's Jesus that is the focus of everything, that it's his life, his death, his resurrection that brings us the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. It's not a thing that we do ourselves. It's completely the work of the Son of God. This has been the message of the Holy Christian Church from the beginning. Everything is focused on the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of God, and the Savior of the world. When we say that we are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone, we mean that Scripture is the authority in our church and in our lives, and that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the most important thing in our congregations and in our lives. Scripture and especially the gospel, it's the focus of everything. So when you think about your own personal life, picture yourself standing on the truth of God's holy word. Like Jesus said today in the parable, you're building your house on the solid rock of God's holy word. Picture yourself standing in a line with thousands and thousands and millions and millions of other believers in Christ who have confessed the truth of Holy Scripture using the words of the Nicene Creed. It's our turn to stand up and join that line and to echo the truths of Scripture using the words of the Nicene Creed, to confess to the world, this is what the Christian faith is all about. This is who our God is and what he has done for us. When you think about your Christian faith and life, Remember that Jesus is the center of it all. So you're always talking to yourself about repentance, that you're always, always turning from sin, always hating sin, always renouncing the devil and the world and your own sinful flesh, and always knowing that you are forgiven because of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. Let Christ and his word be the foundation of your life. Your life, as well as our congregation and the Holy Christian Church, is built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Today, as we continue our celebration of the 50th anniversary of Trinity Lutheran Church here at Litchfield Park, Arizona, we remember that we are members of a march of a much larger congregation, the Holy Christian Church. And we stand with those believers throughout the centuries who remained faithful to Holy Scripture and who boldly confessed the Nicene Creed. Amen. We pray. Lord of the Church, we thank you for the faithful men and women throughout the generations who contended for the faith and boldly confessed the truth of your holy word. Help us in our day and age to remain faithful, to contend for the faith, and to boldly confess the truth of your holy word. Preserve the Christian faith among us and continue to allow this congregation 
to remain faithful until you return on the last day. We pray this to the glory of the Father, in the name of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever throughout your life. Have a great week. We'll see you next week in worship. Once given, be with us evermore.